We're gonna have a look at using GarageBand again, but this time we're gonna have a look at how we can record uh, MIDI drums into GarageBand using an actual electronic drum kit. You're probably gonna ask a couple things about the video we're gonna do today. Uh, the first one is, if I have an electronic drum kit, how can I get my drums to record into GarageBand using an iPad or an iPhone? And the other question is, what if you run into the problem of the electronic drums that you're using don't translate to the proper drums in GarageBand? So we're gonna answer those two questions today. Thanks for being here. Uh, if you would do me a favor and like and subscribe, and hit the notification bell. That'll alert you to any of the videos that we have coming up here. And I hope that these videos help you out. So without further ado, let's dive in. Said so we're gonna have a look today at using uh, an old electronic drum kit such as this one. This is a Yamaha DT Explorer and uh, it's actually a really good drum module. The pads are still responsive. I think I only had to replace one quarter inch cable. Uh, I believe it was going to my ride cymbal so I replaced that. Other than that I've had this thing a long time and it still works perfectly so I'm pretty happy about that. So like I said, I'm gonna get the MIDI sent out of the DT Explorer and send it into GarageBand. And what we're gonna do is have a look at how GarageBand is interpreting the MIDI data coming from the Yamaha DT Explorer and going into uh, GarageBand. We'll be able to have a look at what it recorded and what it didn't record, and then we got a fix for that too. So let's have a look here. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab camera connector kit, our four port USB hub, and get that connected there. We need to get the MIDI data from the drum module into GarageBand. An M-Audio uh, Uno, I believe it's actually called. It's got one MIDI in, one MIDI out, goes to USB. So all I'm gonna do is gonna take this M-Audio and I'm gonna connect the MIDI out I'll put a link for this in the description as well. And then I'm gonna run this and connect the USB side to the four port hub. Now that I've got that connected, we can see here I've got a green light. It's got a blinking green light and that just means that it's got a USB connection. It's receiving MIDI data. Okay, so you know that the, the MIDI device is working. So that's great. I'll open up this song. We'll hit the add. We will grab the acoustic drums. My cymbal is routed good. Okay, so I've got sound here, so that's great. You could take a quarter inch cable, connect it to the headphone jack so that you can monitor, and you can connect that into the auxiliary in on the drum module. And then when you have headphones connected to the drum module, you'll be hearing the drums coming through GarageBand back out for you to monitor. Let's record a drum beat and see what happens here. Okay, let's see what happened. So we'll go to GarageBand, we'll have a look at the track. Okay, so we'll just flip it back into track view. Okay, so there's MIDI data there, so that's a good thing. Double tap, and then it'll bring up the edit window. Okay, so here's the, the uh, MIDI data. So all the drums are on the left-hand side here. Uh, this, area where the drums are located on the grid are drums that were recorded from the hits, okay? The ones that are on the top here, you can see up on the top, there's no drums assigned there. So, but it did record the MIDI data, okay? So 
that's the great thing about this is that you can just take those MIDI uh, hits and move them down to the drum that you want them to. There was a few things, probably it looks like it recorded four different hits that it didn't know what to do with. And it also might be that some of the ones that it did record, those actually might be on the wrong drums. So we need to correct that, okay? So what we can do is we can just have a look at our, our kit here. And what we wanna do is make sure that we grab the drums and put them on the right side, okay? So this is in case you run into a problem where you're using an electronic drum kit and the MIDI coming out of your drum module doesn't quite line up with the MIDI that's programmed into your DAW, like in this case, GarageBand. So it's nice having an electronic drum kit because you can get the feel and the vibe of what you're playing or what the drummer is playing and get that recorded and then be able to manipulate the drum sounds afterwards. So that's the nice thing about it. So, and you can quantize it right in GarageBand as well. For now, we just want to find out what it programmed. Okay, so let's move back to the beginning and we'll have a listen. And then you can actually copy and paste the entire row of hits down to the drum that you believe was in the right area, okay? So I'm pretty sure that these ones up here, okay, you can just tap and drag across to highlight them. I'm pretty sure those are my first tom, okay? So my first tom is right there. So I'm gonna move those down, okay, to second tom, and then these ones are my floor tom. Okay, so now I've got, so let's just play that section to make sure. Okay, great. So I'm gonna take a guess at what I think my bass drum was, and I'm gonna guess it was, I'm gonna guess it was this one up here. So I'll copy and move that down. Let's see what that sounds like. Okay, think I got it so far. This must be my snare. Okay, now let's check it all out. When you're done editing the MIDI and moving things around here, just click done. Okay, and there you have your drum kit. So that's how you can get an old drum kit like this that maybe has its own special MIDI data to get into GarageBand. And I also did a video where you can actually import your own samples and loops. And I'll link to that as well. And that allows you to record these drums. And if you want to enhance the sound of the drums, you can take the samples from different sample packs you may have. Uh, and there's lots of free ones out there. And you can put those samples in to a separate track and line them up and, and use the volume fader on that track to blend in the drum sounds to make your drums maybe come a little bit more alive with an more of an acoustic kind of sound to it. I hope that this helped you. Uh, if it did and you liked what you saw, uh, if you could do me a favor and just hit the like and subscribe. And if you wanna be notified of more videos coming out that are related to making music in your home studio, hit the bell and you'll be notified of those. Thanks for being here and keep making music. there. So who's there? Who's on the phone? Who's there? Say, hello.
Mario. That's silly. Who's there? Oh.